All right, and with that, like I said before, welcome to our second Road to the Hill session for our summer, our student athlete panel. My name is Matthew Zielinski, Director of New Student and Transition Programs. It's great to be with you all tonight. And uh, we have a, uh, our facilitator, our MC for the night. And so I'm gonna turn it over to the head women's basketball coach and connections instructor. So some of you might have him in class in a few, in a few months time here. Uh, Mark, Mark Katarski, thank you. Thank you for the introduction, Matt. And I wanna thank all of you students, both the current ones at Seton Hill and the new ones that are logged on. I think one of the most important things you'll do in your collegiate experience is to make sure that you maximize all the resources you have. And although there may be, you know, a few of you here tonight, it's still enough for you personally to get information from it. And I think that college really comes down to what you invest in it is what you'll get out of it. And I think this, the investment is both ways tonight. You know, we have people that are current students trying to give that investment backwards. And then we also have new coming students looking to make the most of it. So I, I really appreciate your efforts. Um, as Matt said, my name is Mark Katarski. Um, I am in my, just finished my ninth year as the head women's basketball coach. I've also taught connections here for, I believe, seven or eight years. Um, my master's degree is in higher education administration. And my thesis was actually on um, freshman seminar classes, freshman orientation, uh, freshman connections classes, and uh, their value to the student experience. And so for me, it's an awesome way to be able to go full circle for my studies, but also as an employee of the university, gain a different lens into what is going on. Um, I've worked in higher education for 22 years, coaching athletics, but also in different roles and capacities. And I'm really humbled and honored to be able to help with this tonight. Um, we have an awesome panel. Uh, I kind of see them here on the top. I'll let them introduce themselves um, as they go. And we can kind of start with Bryce and go from there. Uh, my name is Bryce Dare. I'm a sophomore and I play football at Seton Hill. And can you give him your major, Bryce? I major in biology. Chris, I see you up next. Oh, um, I guess technically I'm not part of the panel because I'm I'm just um, I'm Chris Brown. I am a theater design and tech major going into my junior year, and I am one of the orientation leaders and OL captains um, for so summer orientation and social media. So you will see me at any and all um, summer orientations and anything that you see on student life, which you should follow because that's where you will get all of your student events. Um, I post all of that and you'll see me running around in my yellow polo and anything else during welcome weekend, but. And just so you new students are prepared, OL is what we speak to about the orientation leaders. And so that's another way to understand and hear them. They're important people, some of the first people you'll meet on campus. And so Chris is here to kind of represent that, answer any questions that might come and just gain some better information for himself and for all of us. I see Karina up next, Rochester, New York's finest, and she will go ahead and introduce herself. Uh, my name's Karina. I'm going to be a sophomore on the Hill. Uh, my major is in osteopathic medicine, and I'm in the LECOM 4 plus 4, and I play women's soccer and women's lacrosse. And up next is the fastest, best looking, smartest of the Merriweather brothers. Um, he has a twin brother, but Donovan is number one here tonight. I'll let him introduce himself as well. I am. So Bryce won't be on the Hill, but I will be back on the Hill for my graduate year. I'm Donovan. I'm from Pittsburgh. I'm a graduate student with a focus on uh, the MBA program, which is like your master's of business administration here at Seton Hill. Um, and I'm doing my focus in healthcare administration. And then I also run cross country, indoor and outdoor track and field. Um, and then I'm also the GA in the Welcome Center. So when you guys come up for visits, I'm the person that checks you in and like the first person you see when you come into campus. And as Donovan mentioned, he has a twin brother, but the twin brother won't be back at Seton Hill. So that'll make it easier for all of us to know which is which. Although Donovan is clearly the best dressed one of the two brothers as well. And then we also have two more here now. Mackenzie, I'll let you go next. Hello, um, my name is Mackenzie. I am 
a member of the softball team on campus. Um, and I am also an osteopathic medicine uh, major in the bio LECOM four plus four program. Um, and I also have a minor in psychology. A full plate for Mackenzie, who also plays behind the plate, right? In softball, a catcher, correct? I love it. Catchers can do it all. And then finally, last but not least, Nicole, if you could go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Nicole Pulaski. I'm on the women's basketball team. I major in computer science and I'm also an orientation leader. So you hear Nicole there involved as an OL, also as a student athlete. I think you can see in a small sample size from the student athletes that are here, they have involvement in different ways on campus. And I think that's really, really critical um, for their experience to be able to maximize it. It makes them better students. It makes them more fulfilled in their experience and certainly helps all the way around. I guess I'll start the question with, um, start with Donovan. Donovan has um, been involved a lot of different ways, you know, not just one sport because his sports of cross country, indoor, outdoor track basically cover three seasons. He's also had involvement as he heard there with the Welcome Center and some other places. Donovan, can you talk about what it's like to balance those things? And more importantly, how you got started in each of those activities? All right, so the balance I tend to tussle with a little bit. Um, it depends on how the day's going, honestly. Um, but I find the balance to be really, really helpful that time when I'm not doing anything with my like studies, like if I'm not in class or if I'm not at work, um, I find it peaceful to be able to balance that by using my sport a little bit and kind of having that time to kind of sharpen my skills on what I wanna do, but also being able to use that as like my peace of mind. Um, and then how I got started with all of it. So when I came to campus, like for my Centennial orientation, um, much like a lot of students will this weekend, um, I met the admissions department like first thing whenever I got on campus. So I was actually lost on campus when I first got up here. Couldn't figure out where I was going. Um, but I found the person that I started working with, uh, Betty, she works in the admissions department. She's like the assistant to our head of enrollment. And that's who I worked for for three years with uh, before I got my job now. And she kind of pointed me in the direction of where I needed to go, but she helped me balance it by being able to go to work and kind of just unwind a little bit. I was putting together a lot of like stuff that the new students would have gotten when they were in high school, a lot of the information they got about the campus. But being able to use that time to kind of unwind as well was super, super helpful. And then being able to set myself a little bit of time to do my studies was obviously ideal for me and my success. Uh, being able to do everything in the classroom and at work and running, it seems like a lot, but if you take it bit, bit by bit, it makes it so much easier. And research will show the more that students get involved, the better they achieve academically, but also the better percent chance they have to retain to the university. And that's so much of the research I did while in graduate school, and I'm sure Matt could speak to as well. And Donovan gives good examples there of different ways that he's gotten involved. Donovan was somebody that did sports over three seasons. Mackenzie, you're someone that just has a spring sport, primarily with softball. Could you talk about how you manage that, knowing that your fall is not as intense as the spring, you still have commitments, but you have a spring season that depending on the weather, you could have a game and a test, or you could be on a bus to go in somewhere for a game. Um, yeah, so the biggest thing with playing a sport is you have to make sure that you're on the same page as your professors and you have to make sure that they're aware, especially if you play an outdoor sport. Um, anything is up to the weather at all times. I mean, we, we were playing in March and it was snowing and we were having games canceled because our field was covered in snow. Um, and you'll get a, you'll get a, a letter um, that you give to your professors um, that'll kind of just provide you, um, it'll provide them with the dates of your games. Um, but, you know, I always let them know, this is the, the current schedule. Um, I will update you each week um, prior, um, weather permitting, what's going on with the games that week. Are they still on? Are we supposed to get more, more feet of snow in April? Like you just never know. Um, but, for just the balancing aspect, um, it's really all about using your free time and like capitalizing on your free time and being intentional with your work. I always say like 
my grades are normally better in the spring because I'm way more intentional with my free time and I'm able to focus a lot better because in the, in the fall, yeah, we're still practicing a lot and we have a couple games and it's not like we have tons of free time in the fall. Um, but, um, I definitely am more say I have half an hour to sit down and get some work done. I'm going to be very intentional with that time and get my things done other than be like, well, I don't have anything going on tomorrow, so I don't have to get it done now. Um, but it's all just about being intentional with your time and focusing in when it counts. You heard Mackenzie. I think she said two important things for all the people on the panel here. She said about the value of 30 minutes. I take that even further. I think the value of 15 minutes, when you understand that as a college student, you can maximize your experience. 15 minutes to set aside to study for a test next week, 15 minutes to write letters to your uh, faculty members, your parents, call your parents, call about something else you need to do. Um, 15 minutes makes a difference. And I think Mackenzie talking about being intentional is also critical as well. Those are important skills. I'll go to Bryce first, then Kareen, I'll come to you, not because you're both from Western New York, but the two of you both play fall sports and your timetable and your calendar is a little different. You come to campus when it's fairly empty. You get to see the campus come alive as you're there. What are some of the challenges, drawbacks, benefits of being a fall student athlete that gets there a little earlier than others? Karina, you can go first. We'll let Bryce go second. Um, well, especially like when we came um, in the fall uh, last semester, it was nice to like be there early and kind of like get your bearings before everybody else came. Um, and it's also really cool to see like as time goes on, like more and more people, especially like the internationals are coming on campus. But it's also like key for uh, the sports teams because we all like get to spend those like two weeks, like really to get close and like get prepared for the school year. Um, so yeah, I think it's a lot of fun. And if you take advantage of it, um, it puts you on good bearings for like the rest of your semester. Bryce, anything you would add to that, or you want to speak to the fact you're about six hours or so from, from here, Bryce, any challenges you had with the distance homesickness and maybe how you navigated that? Yeah. So I think, I think it's kind of like what, uh, Karina said, like, when you get here, it's kind of nice because you can get here and like figure out the campus before you actually have classes to go to and school starts. So like you can kind of use, especially like if you move in a day before your fall camp starts, like you can kind of take that day to like go around campus and check it out. And then kind of like with a long distance, it's really not that bad. Like it, it was kind of bad, like the first like couple of weeks, but like you're, you're so busy and you have, so, there's so much going on and like you're meeting so many new people and um, at least like with the football team, like everybody was so welcoming and that's how it is like with every other sports team too on campus. And like, even once you meet um, the rest of the kids, like in your dorm room, you'll see like you have so much in common with everyone on campus that it really kind of makes it easier. And everybody's always trying to like find something to do because there's downtime. So like, homesickness really wasn't that big of a problem for me after like the first week because you know you find your friends and like you just want you all want to go do stuff together so it's really not that bad distance from home is really what you make of it you know Bryce is somebody who's six hours away we'll talk to Nicole here in a second who's about a half hour away but it's really what you make of it in your in your um, experience at the college level I would also encourage you if and when more importantly when you feel homesickness articulate that your OLs, your resident assistants, the RAs, those are all people that would be trained to help you with it. And without asking, they don't know if they can help. So feel free to do that. Nicole, you're somebody that's a little closer. How do you balance some of the tendencies or things that might pull you to wanna to come home more with trying to balance that out and staying on campus? Honestly, I barely went home <laughs> whenever I was on campus because I was so busy with school or with basketball because if I went home for one day I felt like I was two days behind in like school work or in basketball or hanging out with friends so or even in work study I also did work study and I worked on the weekend so I couldn't go home on the weekends so I felt like I spent most of my time on campus just doing homework and stuff but and then I also know Nicole a little different than the other panelists so I'll come back to Nicole for another one 
Um, Nicole, if you're comfortable sharing, you came in as one major and then have recently decided to change to another. Research says that most students will change their major three to four times, let alone their careers at a number higher than that. How was that process for you? Not just the detailed logistics about doing the paperwork, but just sort of processing that mentally to say, hey, this is something I thought I liked, but now I'm going to change this. How did you kind of manage all of that? Well, whenever I was going into Seton Hill, I was stuck between three majors, engineering, nursing, and computer science. I, my dad's an engineer. He took me to his work. I didn't like it, so that was easy to like scratch off the board. But I was like stuck between computer programming and nursing. I was just like, okay, I'm going to major in nursing and take a couple classes in computer programming. And the more classes I took in computer programming, I was like, wow, I really, really like this. I liked it more than nursing. And I don't know, I just switched. I, I enjoyed my computer programming classes more than my nursing classes. And it also came easier to me. Like I felt like in nursing, I had to study the extra hour because to me, it was harder for me to learn while computer programming, it just came easier to my brain and I could it was easier for me to do. Thank you. And that shows some of the new com the incoming students that you may have ups and downs through that. It doesn't make you a bad person. It doesn't make you a failure or anything. It's just part of the journey. There are support at Seton Hill that can help you both if you have struggles academically, but also try to help you find those new paths. We have great resources over in our Career Professional Development Center. And those things, again, like the thing you're doing tonight are all available to you as part of your tuition and your fees. I wanna to go to Bright or Donovan. I said Bryce, I wanna to go to Donovan. Um, there is a Bryce, but not the Donovan's Bryce because Donovan has a twin brother. But I wanna to go to Donovan and Mackenzie. You guys are a little further along academically than some of the other students. Can you talk about things looking backwards that you would say, man, I wish I would have known this when I was a freshman or a sophomore academically specifically. And that could be anything from the challenges of majors to the resources that are available or um, anything else that may have helped you during that stage. You want to go first, Donovan? I think for me, it's the, it's the networking opportunities I got as a junior and as a senior this past year. Um, we had similar opportunities as freshmen and sophomores to do those things, but for me, it didn't open up as much as I thought it would, not in the, not in the right fields for me. Um, Healthcare was not my first choice. I originally wanted to do stuff with sports when I did business. So my undergrad major was business or admin with a specialty in entrepreneurship. So um, healthcare wasn't the first thing on my radar, but it was definitely on there just because of my brother Bryce. But I wish I would have had more opportunities there to kind of network because now I found it harder um, as a junior when I was looking for internships. Like that was the one thing that was hard is I didn't know that many people in healthcare. But we had really, really good advisors here, um, especially in my field. Like I could just text, email one of them, and I could have a new contact within like five minutes of just texting my advisor. Or at least they would point me in the right direction to kind of set up that new contact. Mackenzie, things you would add. Um, I would say my biggest takeaway, I'm going to be a junior in the fall. Um, my biggest takeaway from my sophomore year was utilizing office hours um, with your professors. Um, so every class that you have, um, your professors are going to provide about probably three, three slots per week, um, each about like probably ranging from an hour, two hours, three hours, probably depending on your major. I'm only familiar with science. Um, sorry, my dog is crawling across my computer. Um, okay. Um, but I would say, you know, I... My freshman year, I did not really go to a lot of office hours. I just didn't really think they would be helpful. And I was nervous that it would just be like, not a waste of time, but I just, you know, kind of overlooked them. And in my sophomore year, I was in organic chemistry, one and two, my one of my freshman or my first semester to my second semester. Um, and I found myself in office hours for my one lab class every single week. I was like on a streak. I went every week, I sat in there for an hour and I just like soaked in all my professors had to say. And, and I just found that it really, really helped me. And, and at the end of the semester, I was like, wow, like where would I have been had I not 
been like what would my grade have been if I weren't you know if I weren't utilizing these these um these office hours and I think they're really helpful because your professors like want to see you succeed your professors do not just want you to come in and not do well and do poorly on the tests you know chances are like your professors say it's a lab report an essay an exam they're going to tell you this is how you're going to be successful this is what I want to see on this paper this is what I want to see in this lab report um you know and again it's it is their job you know it's not inconveniencing them I would go into office hours I'd be like hi I'm here again and and they would kind of be like oh my god like well it's really boring if nobody shows up you know um, they want they want to come here from you and they want to help you. Um, so that would be my biggest um, my biggest suggestion would be to take advantage of those those one on one opportunities with your professor. I mean, that's like the biggest advantage of going to a small school, in my opinion, you know, having that one on one relationship with your teachers and your professors, I mean. Um, so, yeah. And again, you hear from Mackenzie and even from Donovan, the idea about trying to maximize the resources that are there. And I think that's something that we need to remember in life. We often regret the things we don't do way more than the things that we do. And you kind of heard from those student athletes that that's something that they articulated is that they regret not doing things as opposed to, wow, I went to too many office hours or I went and got involved in too much. And so I think that's really, really important. Um, I want to ask each of you, we'll start with Bryce. We'll go to Karina. We'll go to Mackenzie. We'll go to Nicole. We'll go to Donovan in that order. If you could say it in one word, one phrase, one sentence, the hardest thing about being a student athlete. Time management. Time management. Karina. Oh boy. <laughs> Can you come back to me? You have to say pass. It's like being on a game show. Pass. 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 <laughs> Mackenzie. Pass. Nicole. I was going to say time management. <laughs> that's fine. If that's what you feel, then I think well, that's a good one to hear. It kind of reinforces it. Donovan. Patience. Patience. Interesting. Karina, we'll come back to you. I got mine now. Um, communication. I would say... Like, especially for anybody who's going to be two sport athlete, you have to talk to both coaches. You have to inform one on what's going on with the other sport, even if you're not in season. Um, if you don't communicate, like even like Mackenzie talked about, like when you're missing class for games, um, if the communication isn't there, then um, it's harder to succeed. But if you do communicate and um, work ahead of time, then you'll be fine. And especially because the professors want you to succeed. Mackenzie? Um, I would say absence. Um, and this is kind of comes in two ways. Um, absence from class can be a little challenging. Um, you really have to stay on top of catching up with the work that you missed. Um, and that sort of thing, maybe even just like missing out on like a lecture, you know, just hearing what your professors have to say about the topic. Um, and then even, um, you know, maybe absence from being able to go home as much. You know, as a student athlete, you may not be able to go home um, you may miss out on like social events around school, um, but in my opinion, it all really, really pays off. Like the friendships you're going to build with those friends and your teammates are unmatched. So, Like most things, there's a give and a take, and Mackenzie kind of alluded to that. I'll go back to the panelists again in reverse order, starting with Donovan, the best part of being a student athlete. Ooh. I don't know if I can describe it in one word. Um... With the judges will accept a phrase or even a sentence. Okay. I would say the best part is just like being able to share uh, like your competitive energy with your teammates to kind of succeed at what you guys want to have happen as a group. Nicole? Family. I feel like this year we were so close, like all of us as teammates and Honestly, I can I can call like Maddie Fisher like 10 years later and still have a conversation with her. Like I considered her one of my good friends. I felt like everybody on the team was just so close. And that's the one word I would just is the best about being a student athlete is being a part of a family. And the teammate you mentioned, she was a graduate student. Yeah. So you were a freshman and you felt that connection. That's pretty powerful. Mackenzie. 
I would just say like the way that you can see all your hard work pay off, whether it's um, like an individual accolade that you earn or a team accolade that you earn or um, the success you find in the postseason or maxing a new record in the weight room. Like it literally, you know, it, it can be a little draining just, you know, how much time and you put into practice and lifts and everything in school, even, um, you know, in the classroom, getting that GPA that you want, um, you know, it's so rewarding to see all that hard work pay off at the end of the semester. Karina. Um, I would say like the friendships that you make similar to, to, to what Nicole was talking about. Uh, we had like 14, 13, 14 freshmen come in last year and we like ate dinner together like every night um, at school. So definitely take advantage of like your teammates because um, you'll they'll, they're, they're the ones that are going to get you through it all. So Bryce, final thoughts on um, the best part of being a student athlete. I'd say your support and not just like from your friends, but also like your coaches. And one of the things, like if you are like a lot of the feelings that you'll have, like whether it's homesick or like being frustrated because when everyone comes to college, like they were obviously the best on their high school team. And maybe like, you're not doing as well as you want to do. Like I'm sure that like other freshmen have that same feeling. Like, so just leaning on each other for support, like that's a huge thing to be able to call on them if they're homesick and you guys can go do something or just look for like people that like help lift you up when you're feeling down. And I want to follow up on something Bryce mentioned there. Different than in high school, your coaches in college, most of them are going to be full-time employees. We're employed to just be coaches. We don't teach classes. We don't do other things. We are just coaches full-time. And as a result, we're on campus more often and we're available through the day. So as athletes, remember that you have us as a resource that can help you. And that can be from everything from, can you help me figure out this major talk to this person to, hey, I'm not feeling great physically. I'm not feeling great mentally to everything in between. And it could even be additional work in your sports, skill work, film, et cetera. So again, as the theme you keep hearing about maximizing your experience, remember too that us as coaches are employed to help kind of serve you as student athletes. And we can do that in a myriad of ways. And I would encourage you to, to use that and maximize it as you go through it. This time has gone really, really quick. We've had about a half hour, of really good discussion. Matt, I wanna to touch base with you to see kind of where we are, if there's anything else we need to add, or if we wanna kind of open up to some questions. I know we have a kind of a dedicated number here. So I'm wondering if we can get some personalized questions and responses to the, uh, the, the guests that we have with us. Absolutely, absolutely. And so, yeah, so, uh, uh, you know, and Chris and I have been asking around just trying to get the sports of some of our audience members here. So, yeah, we've got a, we've got a great batch of uh, men's soccer players, women's soccer players, wrestlers, softball players, tennis, lacrosse, football. So we've got a, a good group of incoming athletes here with us today. But absolutely, I want to make sure that everyone knows that um, we do have time set aside for you all. So if you have questions that you want to ask again if you want to if you want to unmute yourself and ask those go ahead um, if you want to type them in the chat uh, they can be questions for all of our panelists in general or if you have a sports specific question uh, based upon who we have in our panel absolutely if anyone has any questions and you all know how this works if one, one of you asks a question then you'll all ask so we just need that first person yep. break the ice and go ahead and get a question going um, cause again, you have a wonderful resource here and opportunity to ask some stuff with some great panelists. Hi, I actually have a question for Mackenzie since I'm going to be playing softball about how many hours of practice would you say that you guys do per week in the fall versus in the spring? Um, okay. So the, the main difference between the fall and the spring is in the fall, we're going to have about five days of practice a week. Um, and not every practice is a softball practice. You know, some of those practice might be a lift. Um, so we, I would say in the fall, it's probably four softball practices, one lift, and then one day where you have both. I don't, I can't really quantify um, hours. I mean, I would say, for practice, we usually practice anywhere from like an hour and a half to um, 
two and a half hours. Um, and then in the spring, we actually have six days of practice or games a week, and we have one day off. Um, Coach Katarski, do you have information on hours? Like we, we talked about this before. To, yeah, I don't want to misrepresent it, but was it Morgan? Is that the one that asked? Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to misrepresent it, but um, the compliance office for athletics, they'll meet with you as you first come to campus and they'll explain the regulations are there. And then you will also, as student athletes, input that and verify it so that your coaches can make sure they're staying together with that. You have every right to understand that, discuss that and monitor that. But typically you have to have at least one day off and, and sometimes in the season too, uh, which can help you with that. Um, but I know a lot of the coaches try to use different tools. The panelists here, I know for our sport, we use Google calendars to share our practice and workout information. Are there any other ways that the rest of you get that information from your coaches and sort of how do you synthesize that? The softball team additionally uses a Google calendar um, and it's updated a week in advance. So usually on like Sunday night, we'll have the whole practice schedule for the week. And then usually we have the same, same off days are consistent throughout the semester, um, but it all depends. But yeah, it, there is a set um, limit on hours depending. And I think it changes throughout the semester. Um, you know, maybe some weeks you may have eight hours of practice permitted. Some, you know, maybe you might have 15 hours of practice permitted once you get more into the heart of the season. Um, it all just depends, but you know, everybody will work with you. You will always stay up to date on when you need to be where, how long you need to be there, what you need to wear, everything. <laughs> Thanks for the question, Morgan. Thank you. Other questions? Uh, I have a question for anyone that's kind of open. Um, how, how hard is it to gauge how much time to dedicate to uh, your practice or your academics? Like, is, is that a cool, you know, you have to make it yourself, but being new as well. Is it, is it harder to cool because you haven't had that experience to, to gauge how much time to commit to what, if you know what I mean? That's a great question, Henry. Any of the panelists willing to give some thoughts to him on that? Um, I kind of say, like, you'll figure it out pretty fast. Like, I mean, the, all the professors I'd say are really good about posting all of your assignments on Canvas. So, and if you don't know what that is, that's fine. Like you'll figure it out, but that's like where all of your assignments will be. Like th some of them will even have it posted for the entire semester. So you can see exactly what's due when. So as long as like you, ha you can like make a planner or if you like struggle with like allotting time, you can make a planner and then figure out how to schedule your week around your practices. But I'd say like, maybe like the first week is kind of tough because you wanna go see everybody and see what's new. But like, after like the first couple of weeks, it's really like easy to start managing your time better. I'm gonna piggyback off Bryce. I think it is as well. Um, it's also easier, I would say after that first week, because you can lean more on your upperclassmen as well. Like they've been around the block a few times. And I know for me personally, like I had, we had two freshmen this past year and they couldn't figure out what they wanted to do during the week to try and figure out how to spend their time. And they started just leaning on the upperclassmen. That we, had. we had a lot of upperclassmen on the men's track and cross country team. And we were just able to kind of show them what we did whenever we were freshmen and kind of let them balance off of that, kind of make it their own as well. Um, I also, oh, sorry. That's all right, no, I was just saying thank you. Um, I, I also think that um, like if you want to put more hours toward your sport, like whether that be individual with your coach or whatever that you want to do, it's, it's just something where you might have to plan the week ahead of say, okay, this is what I need to do on each day academically and like write out all your assignments and then be like, okay, I can allot this many hours on this day to go do extra work, if that makes sense. Yeah, thank you. That's great. Yeah, good question, Henry, and good responses as well. Matt, maybe another question or two? 
Um, I have a question. So sure. I'm coming in on the women's soccer team and I just like recently tore my ACL and I got surgery. So I was just wondering like how well is like the athletic trainers like able to like respond with us and like how's the communication and like how they are? Great question. I'll let the, the panelists answer that. They're the ones that, that deal with that more directly. Our athletic training staff is literally amazing. Um, they're so amazing. I have, you know, being a catcher, it's a very physical position. I'm always struggling with injuries, whether it's my arm is killing me or my knees hurt or whatever. And um, you will have a specific trainer assigned to your sport. Um, and it's really easy to grow a relationship with them. Um, and they are amazing to create rehab plans. So you can, you can schedule a time every day to be in there and work with your trainer and do rehab and do ice and do heat and do your stretches and your exercises. Um, it's like, they're amazing. And I don't know if anybody else has like really, um, you know, if anybody else has anything to say, but nothing but amazingness from the athletic training staff. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think with ACL tears, it's so common, especially women's soccer, women's lacrosse, even softball. I think you guys had one. Um, but we've had, they've had so many ACL tears. They've dealt with it. Um, our trainers, like they're so prepared for it. Like they will start rehab with you as soon as possible. And Heather, I'll send you our trainer. So then she can already get in touch with you now so that you'll have a plan going into preseason. Thank you. And I would recommend all the athletes that are athletic trainers are contracted through Excella Health, which is the local hospital system. So they in turn are connected with the different resources right in our vicinity in Greensburg. And so that is a real advantage to be able to have that. And we wish you a speedy recovery, Heather, as you come back. And I'm sure you'll crush it as you go through this process. Thank you. Anyone else with questions? Yeah, we have time. And I, I sent a message through the chat too. If you can't vocalize or if you want to private message me so I can read it for you, I don't have to, um, you know, but if anyone has any questions here, it's been great questions, great dialogue so far. Thank you to everyone. Well, I will go ahead and um, just say thank you to everybody for their time tonight. It's the summer. Uh, it's a beautiful weather day, at least for us down here in the Pittsburgh area. So to have everybody on here is really appreciative. As always, I learned from this. It was valuable to hear the questions from the incoming students and the input and the response from our panelists. So I thank you personally. I would ask all the panelists any final words or thoughts you would have to share, Karina. I'll let you go first. Um, I would just say, like, come in really excited to play. No matter what it is, like, you're going to be nervous. And just lean on your teammates and your coaches and all the support that you'll have when you come um, because that will really, like, make the experience, like, a lot of fun. Mackenzie. Um, I would just say to make sure you soak it all in. Um, I feel like my first year, like, the softball team had a very successful year this past year, um, but I would still say that I think my freshman year was my favorite. Um, it's just it's just a year for you to learn and have fun. Um, you know, there's no pressure. You know, you just you're literally just there to play, have fun, and you know, obviously um, work hard in school. Um, but just soak it all in and enjoy everything. Make friends. You know, go do things that you're nervous to do just do it, do everything, get involved. And I would say uh, uh, echoing off Mackenzie, my experience in 20 plus years in higher education, what you do on the first weekend is very much a litmus test of what you'll do in your career. Meaning if you come in and it's just you and your roommate or you and the boyfriend, girlfriend from back home or whatever, that's what it will be for four years. But if you come in on the first weekend, and you go out and you explore and do different things, that's typically the experience you'll have. So I would really encourage all of you to just give thought to that as you prepare for it. Nicole, thoughts? To be more involved, to be as involved as possible as a freshman, because if you enjoy, 
if you join a bunch of clubs, you get to meet a bunch of new people and make friends with a lot of people. And to also enjoy your freshman year, you're only a freshman once. Thank you, Nicole. Bryce? Um, I don't know. I mean, I think these guys like covered it for the most part. I'd say, uh, I don't know, just be yourself, I guess. Don't try to like be somebody or not just to make some new friends at college. Like you'll find your, your like group of people, you'll find your clique and you know, it doesn't take long. It'll take like first weekend. You'll know, you'll know who you spend the rest of the four years here with. That's wonderful advice, Bryce, about being yourself. It can be a minefield and challenging, but staying true to yourself is important. Donovan, I'll give you the mic drop, my friend. I agree with Bryce. I think being yourself is going to be pivotal. Um, just remember the goals that you guys want to have for your freshman year also, and just kind of enjoy it like everyone else is saying. You got to enjoy it. If you don't enjoy it, it's not going to be fun. You just got to make it as fun as you can. Like they said, you're only a freshman once. I'm a fifth year coming up this year, and – I'm excited. I just want I just want to enjoy this year. I want to bring as much energy as I can. And that's kind of my slogan with my team is like, I say, just bring the juice, just bring your energy and just be yourself and enjoy who you are. Um, and you'll, you'll be able to, like Bryce said, you'll be able to find your clicks, even with your clicks, like your, your clicks are going to find other clicks to kind of hang out with. That's just kind of how this campus is. It's small enough that like everyone knows everyone. And if you don't, you will meet them within like the first week of classes. Very good. Uh, a reminder to all of you, both the panelists, the incoming students, Matt, Chris Brown, who's on here as well, myself, uh, we're all resources that want to help you in this journey. Please don't be afraid to maximize that. Uh, your mental wellness and your well-being is critical, and please use those resources to help you through that at all. Uh, Matt, I'm good on my end. If there's any closing thoughts you have to kind of put a bow on all of this. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I let everyone know too at the very, very end, we'll uh, turn off the recording. And so if anyone has any private questions they need to ask, you can feel free to do so at the end. Don't, don't be afraid with that. Um, but again, I, I want to thank you all for being able to be here today. Um, our second of our Road to the Hill sessions, there are more coming up. Chris will talk about that in a second. I want to thank Coach uh, Katarski for being here again on his Monday night with his family to be able to facilitate this conversation. He's the master of this. Um, I hope you all had a great time just listening to this all. Uh, yes, thank you to our panelists who, who offered their experiences and their advice to be able to help you all. Um, and for our, for our incoming students, don't forget, um, they, were, they were in your place at one point in time. Um, and, you know, Mackenzie was an OL, Nicole is an orientation leader. Uh, so many of opportunities for you to get involved. We'd love some of you to, uh, to be able to join the OL team next year as well. So um, we look forward to seeing you in August. So that, that's this road to the hill is one piece of your adjustment um, and, and your orientation to campus. Some of you might have already come to your Setonian orientation in May. Others of you will see you either this Friday or in July or August for your Setonian orientation and then get ready for Welcome Weekend. Welcome Weekend is, is our big orientation weekend um, all day, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. When you get to campus, we have a full schedule ready for you all. Very excited to, to have you interact with us. Um, and with that, I'll turn it over to Chris to talk about some of our upcoming Road to the Hill sessions. Thank you. Um, as Matt has already said, thank you to the panelists and Coach Katarski for doing this. I uh, also want to thank our participants as well, because without you guys, we would be, be able to have the session in general at all. Um, but I will be talking about some of our upcoming events. Um, you can find all of our events on the Road to the Hill website, which is roadtothehill.seatonhill.edu. Um, and with that, if you come to three out of the 10 sessions, you will receive exclusive shoe swag. Um, so this is one, just show up to two more and you'll get something that nobody else will have. Um, our next session after this, which will be Thursday, June 23rd at 6 p.m. is our trivia night. Um, this isn't like a super serious thing, something fun. Why not? Um, and our top three winners will receive a $25 gift card to Barnes and Nobles, which works at our bookstore as well. And then after that Tuesday, June 28th at 7 PM, we have another Griffin gathering, um, where you'll get a chance to just talk to a bunch of other incoming students like you guys. Q&As, talking to orientation leaders, if you have any other questions that you can't think of right now, 
You might think of them later while you're walking around, anything. Um, and then after that, we have a session July 6th, um, which is uh, of interview our commuters, our commuter panel. Um, but thank you guys. I'm glad you guys were able to make it. Can't wait to see you guys come on campus and enjoy you enjoy yourselves through Welcome Weekend and everything else. Um, aside from orientation, everything, cutting, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, clubs like Nicole was talking about a little bit. Get out there, don't be afraid. There, even if there's no commitments to clubs, so you can show up once and never show up again and it will be completely fine. But thank you for coming and uh, I will turn it back over to Matt if he has anything else. I don't think he does. There you go. Thank you, everyone, for a good night. Yeah, we, we've uh, enjoyed being with you all. I will turn off the recording here.